Hi, everyone. My name is Pedro. I'm from Brazil. And today I'm going to show you a little bit about my work in this project that I'm going to talk about a little further. A little bit, a little bit about me. Um, I um, started my 3D career like uh, 20, 20. Are you guys listening that way? Okay. Yes? Yeah. Um, more like 21 years, uh, 21, 22 years ago. And I remember 2003 when Blender was like pink selection was terrible. And I decided to focus in hard surface because at that, this time I was struggling in organic. So I focus more in hard surface. I love to do weapons and stuff. This is some weapons for a game, for a zombie game that I was working a few months ago. This is some mix of personal, fan art, and, and projects. And of course, sometimes I try to do organic stuff because some people, when you say, oh, I love hard surface and stuff, they think, oh, yeah, you can do organic stuff. So sometimes I take my iPad and start sculpting stuff and just to prove myself that I can do something like that. These are character made uh, based in the concept for artists for my team, Wings of Hero, Kuba Fiddler, a very talented Polish artist. And yeah, and after several years, I moved from Brazil to Poland to work for 10 Square Games. And now I'm working for this game called Wings of Heroes, which is basically a multiplayer aviation game, as is it's saying there. It's a, like player versus player. You can kill each other using this World, of, World War II aircraft. And I'm kind of new in the team, like for four or five months ago, I started the team and I was hired to do these airplanes. And that's the kind of assets I'm doing right now. This one that I'm, is still work in progress. Looks like GI Joe toy aircraft for me. And yeah, some renders that I do to check like how, how far can I go with this because uh, for mobile games, you have a lot of uh, marketing stuff happening. So it's cool to use the same, mo the same object that you have in the engine uh, for the marketing stuff as well. So using these uh, cycles and this through, through Skype and aviation engine inside Blender, we can get this uh, very easy result using the same modeling as in the game. And yeah, um, what I'm going to talk uh, to share with you guys is just simple techniques that I collect, maybe nothing from NASA or something, just simple techniques that, uh, that I put together and I'm I can deliver this airplane fully ready for the engine like in 80 days. If it's a small airplane like that, if it's a big one, like 10 days top, so so, I mean, I think eight, 10 days is, is good enough. So just to briefly, maybe some of you doesn't know, uh, um, usually my, the process for an, an, an asset for me is like, I take it, I receive that concept. So I do the right poly, right? And then I work in low poly, topology, UV, and baking, the, 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 the model. What I mean is something like that. Uh, it's for a previous project from 10 Square Games. So I would receive this from a concept artist called Nahuel from Argentina. And I would deliver this, this asset that way. I'll, I'll, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, something's happened. OK. So another one from the same artist. And for me, it's the, the usual pipeline, right? I receive the concept and then I start my process. But that's not my, that's not my reality in this game. Uh, when the game designers and the business, you know, the smart people decide which airplanes they want to feature in the, in the game. 
I started my, my no concept process because I have to dig in the internet, find photos, blueprints and stuff so I can start my process. And, oh, and as I said, uh, I have no time for high poly because they, they want like an airplane ready for the engine. Eight, 10 days tops, depends on the model, as I said. So, okay, so I had to figure it out a way to deliver very high quality models without doing one of the most enjoyable process, uh, in my opinion, which is the high poly, because I can use uh, like Blender or other like commercial software that I won't name it. <laughs> and, and yeah, so, okay, no high poly, so how am I gonna do that? Like, so let's take it, people say, oh, but uh, you are 20, 20 years in the market, so you should be very, very smart. But no, the software is changed every year, like Blender changed like a lot. So I was like, okay, let's do a test because I always wanted an uh, opportunity to do airplane and it was good because someone decided to pay me to do that. So it was good. So I was like, okay, let's keep in mind everything that uh, is important for this project. So collecting good reference, organize the, the reference, using the right modern techniques because you know there is a lot of techniques that you can use nowadays. And yeah, like he's spending the polygons wisely as respecting, I, I put expecting poly count, but should be expecting the specifications. And then I started my work like, okay, let's dig in the internet, searching for whatever they want, whatever it, it have for me. So I love you, Yosef. I think most of artists use the period have. I like because I can organize, like, I, I really like this feature that I just realized like one year ago when you can just drag a link and you can organize all the photos in the link for you. I didn't know that and for me it's super cool. See, for me it's super cool this feature. And yeah, so for me the most important um, reference for this job, since I don't have a concept, and, and there is no reason for a concept because it's a, a Warcraft that, uh, that was uh, for the war. So I realized that the blueprint was the, the best thing for me, but I learned in the hardest way that uh, I cannot just uh, take a blueprint from the internet, align in the software, start modeling like crazy, because I learned that, that there is like, I have a model here, yeah. So, oh, it's not working. Okay, so I have this blueprint that's more, more, most common, I would say, and the other one that, uh, for me, in the beginning, it was kind of the same, and I was like, but then I realized that there is a difference very important for me. Which one I will go further, then I'll go back to, to, to explain. This one with these shapes, you can see that this, sh this shape is like this legend, and you can see there is a legend there. So that means that is the shape and the position of the shape. So when I realized and I learned that, not only for the, for the wings, but for the body, I realized that, okay, that's, that's the thing that I need to go, go for, in the, for the looking for the internet. Then I start like, like everyone aligning and then see, I'm just using these shapes to organize them to, they, uh, it together. So I can use this very simple bridge and, but I'm sure that the shape is correct because I just took from here, right? And I realized that, uh, or oh, maybe I'm, I'm very lucky I'm, my, I'm going to my sixth airplane and I can find all these kind of blueprints, but I need to pay attention so I can, I can see that's the one for me. And yeah, and with this simple technique, I can like, uh, I can like uh, go and achieve the, the result that I want. Another example is the same technique, like just, just like a, I'm trying to translate an expression in Brazil, but I mean, that's like robbing or like stealing because I'm just taking it and projecting. And you can see that's very easy to achieve the, the, the right shape. And yeah, talking now again about the techniques, I always, uh, some years ago, not now, is struggling for the techniques that I think is the best because there is traditional poly by poly, there is sculpting, then you can like retopo, uh, Boolean operations and mechanical modeling. And this is the, 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 most, the, the most techniques that I use nowadays. I really like that one that's like, uh, we have the ZBrush license, but I always try to think, how can you do that in Blender? How can you do that for free? So I do that process very often when I have this very complex shape 
because I don't bother for topology. You can see the topology is messy. I just don't go cheap and there's like millions and I don't, I don't give, uh, you know, I don't care. And then I do the, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do the Boolean operation. And then I use this uh, remesh from Blender and you can see I have a very nice uh, high poly just ready for be like uh, baked in a low poly mesh. And I really like that one, but uh, is outside Blender. So like, is a, I really love this one because it's very, very easy to get the shape I want, very complex shape. And I love that it keeps the history of what I did. Like uh, you see like the cylinder and I can, you can see that I can grab the cylinder. It, it calculates in kind of real time, like Fusion 3060, but it's a free software and I can combine with Blender. That's why it's, it's here. So you can see the model in Blender and it's perfect. And I just have to do the topology if I had the time for it, I'm just showing, but I can't use it nowadays because it's very time consuming, but I think, I think it's a good, uh, if you don't know, it's a good way to use it combined with Blender. And this one is one that I use the most because it's very is everything is inside Blender and I can just like uh, like do the Boolean operations, take the result, use the decimate to get this starting starting mesh. So I can start for this last uh, the last result and like do my cleanup, like prepare the model for UV. And I like because if my smooth group is already okay, as you can see here. So the decimate, uh, the Blender decimate to a modifier does the job very well. And yeah, talk about the specification that I mentioned. I have this specification. Um, I can go like crazy to 15K uh, okay, tri triangles, 2K map resolution. And unfortunately, I don't have like the beautiful word that uh, like Eva's work like doing very beautiful and UDs UV. Unfortunately, I have to do everything in a single map, but it's okay. And all, of course, focus on the silhouette to deliver the best as possible. And to show more in my process, I will like show a little bit step by step how I achieve a model like this and only use the Blender because for this, I decided to say, okay, I love uh, Substance Painter, but I want to achieve the same equality in Blender. So I was like, I struggled a little bit and how I could do that in Blender, but I think I achieved a very, very nice result that I want to share with you. So let's use this one. So as you can see my blueprint and this uh, green parts is the parts that I decided to do separate from the mesh because they'll be animated or like breakable in the game, something like that. So here you can see the mesh using the techniques I mentioned, like, uh, like the, the bridge and the, you no, know, stealing the shape from the, from the blueprints. And use the, you can see here, like using the, using the Boolean operation to achieve my, my shape. And here I'm showing like uh, uh, the, 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 rash, the mesh done. And maybe if some of you doesn't know I'm talking about the Boolean operations and stuff, I did this GIF so you can understand. Like using other meshes to achieve the final result that I want. And then after this operation, I go to the cleanup, which basically means like um, cleaning the mesh that Boolean operation lives in the, in the mesh, which this GIF is, is showing by the way. Just removing like uh, unnecessary vertices, edges, like checking like the silhouette. So I don't need this, this middle edge loop. So get rid of this. So that's what, what I mean. If you don't know about cleaning the mesh. And yet after using this, so I go to the UV, which is not the best, but is what you can do for the, you know, to keep the performance in the game. So but it's not the, I would say that uh, it's not the best, but it's, so it's a mobile game, so it's okay. And for V, I just want to mention that I always consider the player perspective because most of the time, 
the player will be seeing the aircraft from the from the back back view. So I give more resolution in the UV for this part, like the green and the orange one. Even when the play the player can see the in the hangar, he can do like a turntable and check the all the airplane that he's buying. But most of the time he's going to see the game for, from this perspective. So you can see like uh, the selection in the UV is the part that's getting a little bit more resolution. And some can say like I, I was giving this speech and one student told me, yeah, but it's a mobile phone, it's so little in the, yeah, but uh, I didn't know that, but the, the business guys told that uh, some people are like, how you say when you mirror your phone to the television, like 4K television, so, and this smartphone has like 2K resolution, and there is some smartphone with, uh, how you say, more resolution than TVs. That's, that, that's the reality nowadays, so. And yeah, so when this modeling is okay, and I see that, okay, it's good enough, so I have to present that to my art lead so I can go, go uh, forward to the texturing process. And before I send this kind of uh, image where he can see the topology, the silhouette, because I work in Poland and my boss, my art lady works in Italy. I forgot the name, of the, uh, I forgot the name of the city. So it's everything, my communication with him is full online. And I always like to do this show off turntable because you can see like uh, the, the shape, the, sh the, the, the model is working very well. You can see for all perspectives. And of course, it sells better, right? the modeling, right? And other examples for other models. This, this one is a very big airplane. You can see like there is like a, two cabins and like four, five, five per people. So it's a very big one. It's that kind of model that took me like eight, 10 days for sure. This is the, the one that I always remind me when I was a kid, I have this G.I. Joe toy. And I send this image for them when like it's Friday, I have no time for a third table. So I just send these pictures. You can see it's from blended screen. For him, it's enough to check if the mesh is okay. And yeah, when he, everything goes smooth and say, good pet, good job, go forward. Then I start when I said, okay, for this one, I want to work fully in Blender. So I was like, okay, let's do this. So the first thing that I noticed is that I don't have like a high poly, so I won't have this, this perfect bevel in the edges. So I use this very, I think everybody knows, but I'm sharing the way. I use this bevel node so I can bake this bevel node and I can use this like um, when it's baked when I bake the node, I can have this very cheap and very good bevel result. So for me, it's, it's good enough. But that's not enough for, for the mesh, for the final mesh, because the airplane has a lot of uh, you know, metal details, metals like uh, connection and stuff. So I started doing this texture technique in Blender when I can like, uh, you can see there that I'm painting a, a live uh, height map, just like in Substance, but a little bit different. So I use this technique so I can like do all the details I want. And of course, now I have these two brushes, one for the lines and one for the screws. And I was surprised that it, that would work so perfectly in Blender because I was like, mm, I don't think so, but. But I struggled a little bit because I realized that after that the black and white map needs to be 32 bits, otherwise it won't work. See, I can do this screw details that uh, I already had in Substance Painter the brushes, but I can do that in Blender. 
Of course, the, the scale here is not uh, accurate. It's just like a GIF example that I did to show to you. But the scale is not accurate. And then after a lot of work, I would say half day work, I have this kind of uh, height map fully painted in Blender. Of course, I'm checking the, the blueprints because uh, I will go back a little bit to show you what the blueprints. Uh... Yeah, this is not bad. But you can see that there is the lines, right? So I'm like just like very close to my viewport. And oh, there is a line here, here, here. So I'm using these. I'm like robbing this, this paying attention to the blueprint. Let's go back there. Okay, so when I finish uh, after this, like a, for a big airplane that's fully detailable, sometimes take you six hours, like one day work. I mean, focus, they work like six hours. So then what I do is that I combine this height map that I painted with the, no, with the normal bucket that I showed you to you guys. This one, oh, sorry. This one, that's just the bevel node. I just combine them, wait, combine them, and I bake it together in a final, you can see the, de you can see the details uh, together. So I have this final normal map, like combining the bevel that I bake it from the node and the, and the height map that I painted like a plain substance inside Blender. And something that, Finally, <laughs> thank you very much because I was showing this to a colleague and he was like, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. So then I realized, okay, but it's fully perfect. The line is fully perfect. And, you know, I'm like, um, I want this distortion. So I was like, how can I do that in Blender? So I realized that watching YouTube tutorials, that mosquito is not mine. So I realized that this very simple uh, node uh, composition, I can distort uh, uh, my, my map. Of course, I'm doing too much there just to show you the potential that you can go. But it's something like that. You can see like the per perfect line. And here you can see a little bit of distortion. I, okay, you can say, but nobody gonna see that in the mobile. But I mean, in the renders, in the, like, in the marketing stuff, I mean, I think adds more, adds more realism to the final result. And I was like, yeah, we can do that in Blender with no substance. <laughs> so yeah, so this, uh, just the wing for you can see the final result of the details are fully done in Blender. It's very, very beautiful GIF, right? But I have some better pictures for you guys, so. So you can see like, um, okay, if you, if you try to think, like, I was selling this idea to, to my, my colleagues and like, okay, but how long would you take to do a proper aircraft high poly? Like, maybe I'm lazy, but uh, two days, like, and I'm doing this like half day and like one day tops if the aircraft is big because it makes a difference, because like twice the size, so it's uh, uh, triple detail. So if you want to do like proper, proper job. So for me, I was like, good, good enough. And some examples about other aircraft that I did. This one's a very big one. You can see by this, this, because um, maybe, I mean, I'm not sure, where's my mouth? Okay. Maybe you don't know, but uh, the scale of this aircraft uh, matters in the game. So you can see these three little, wi little windows means that uh, it's like at least one person will be there. So other, uh, one here, one here, and two here. One guy shooting here, and one just the pilot. So. So the details are bigger, right? So I have to work for these details here. It's different from this, the, the, this one. It's more work. 
I'm repeating myself like I hope my boss is watching this and so saying, okay, that's a lot of work he's doing. <laughs> so another one, like I have, I have not so big, but uh, a bigger one. And I was happy with the, this is the first one, not so, but okay, it's the first one, was the first try. But I was happy with the detail because for me, this is the most uh, important part of the job because I'm getting rid, get, I'm getting rid of the high poly process, which would take like, because I remember when I, I started this uh, aircraft in this project, my art lady told me, you took 10 days to this aircraft? And I was, yes, and I was like, I was like, uh, it's too much. I was thinking, it's too much. It was, oh, the other guy was taking four weeks. And I was like. <laughs> so yeah, so then I realized, okay, the, this high poly, it's done, but now about painting, because painting substance painter is very cool, right? I mean, I love Blender, but substance painter is so cool. So, okay, let's do the rest of the job. But then I was like digging like crazy in the internet and I find, I find this kit ops smart material, which is very like, a, right, very like painter. And I realized that, okay, if I try like thinking like substance painter inside Blender, if I mix them and I use a mask, just like the height map, but paint the real max, mask, maybe I can combine them. So doing like, uh, you can see there, I have like a blue, kind of, how's the name of this? Um, car paint material. And it's just like a not so polishy metal, a little bit dirt. So I can like, okay, I can paint this map and do this substance stuff. And using these custom brushes, I can have more um, organic, more, um, no, cooler brushes to do better masks. So what I mean is that like, I can paint like a real uh, mask, just like substance. I mean, maybe for you guys like, oh, but I, did, I knew that already. But for me, it was like, I never thought about that. So you can mix and I can just put this mask uh, combined, you know, this uh, bump node, I can combine the normal map and I can put this mask in the bump node, combine the normal in the bump, in the final, in the another normal map and I can have this bump while I'm painting, just like in Substance. And for me, it was like, nice, so it's done. So with this technique, I could achieve this result. As I said in the beginning, for me, it's not something from NASA, out of space, but very simple techniques that I, when I, I had time to think and put together, we could do something like, because you know that is, is small studios cannot afford to have like a zebras license, a painter license, right? And of course, you combine other techniques like stencil that Blender has, it's very good. You can like put these very cool details that the airplane has, like a number, like a airplane model or pinup uh, here, just at the start. And of course, getting an advantage from the smart materials, I can change the paint, the car paint color anytime I want, just. And using, using these techniques, I can go, over, it's very easy because using these, um, these uh, materials from these, these guys, these kit ops, it's very easy to get rid of very nice basis for roughness and metallic because it's smart material. So I just need to do like, for example, in this part, uh, where is that? Wait, wait. Oh, here, for example, that I was getting crazy, very, in, and I was trying to understand, oh, where is my, okay, here, like, uh, when, the, because these, if you don't know, are like, uh, I would say, are weapons, like bullets goes outside from these little holes. And when the air aircraft is flying, the velocity is so high that when they ex explode and the bullets go out, the smoke and the fire burns the metal. So I was, I was checking this little documentary that uh, a friend of mine sent me, and I was like, what's this? And I was like, okay, I was digging, and I realized that uh, because there was this brightness spot, 
like this, like a, like a cat, you know, like when a cat dies in the sofa. You know, I was like, what's this? So I realized, so, okay, so this is the kind of detail that I add in the roughness because it burns the, the, the paint and the, there is this very thin layer of paint. So the metal shines a little bit more through the paint and something, okay, it's, maybe it's too much Pedro for, okay, but I did it. And yeah, so easy, using these techniques and you select a proper way, you can bake the roughness, the diffuse, like, you know, using this uh, blender already like bake, like that is combined, the shadow position. But for us, like PBR pipeline, roughness, diffuse, gloss, and stuff. And yeah, that's the, 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 the final result. I was very happy about it. Maybe the company can save some money or not. So no, but so then after that, I realized, oh, maybe I can do some nostalgic renders like in the, you know, we always like to, because it's a lot of work for our meshes, right? So sometimes we spent a lot of uh, time like rendering something that you did like six months ago, but it's a lot of work. So I was uh, um, like, uh, digging for uh, photographers or collectors from the World War II photographers and stuff. And I was trying to mimic it inside the blender. Okay, how can I do this? So then I realized that there is, there is this aviation around, this true sky, atmosphere. They are not free, but they are not so expensive. So I could achieve this kind of, you know, I was showing to my friends, like, what do you think about this? I really love that one because uh, uh, this, this guy that I showed you before, Kuba Fiddler, he painted this pinup. You know, so this pinup in the in the aircrafts are so cool. And then I was like uh, taking fro from the internet these old, like uh, these meshed uh, photos, and I was combined to the render, and I was looks real, right? I was proud of myself. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, like try to mimic these old movies, old recordings. And then I was like, okay, that's cool, but I like to do cooperation. So I called this artist, uh, Bruno Ferreira, who is a, a friend of mine. I said, okay, if I do these airplanes for you, what you can do with that? I mean, I want to see because it's an environment artist. So I gave it to him and I just said, okay, but I want a breakdown because I'm going to show you in the presentation. And he was like, okay, cool. I'm going to do this. So he took the airplane, he positioned it, and then he break this airplane. It wasn't break that way. So he, he, he broke the airplane, did the smoke and the fang. And I was like, oh, this is super cool. And then I was like doing other renders, like using these uh, add-ons that uh, I mentioned through sky, like um, atmosphere. So this one, I was trying to mimic this box that you, you buy in the store to, you know, to mount the airplane. I was paying attention in this. Uh, I was like uh, uh, digging for, okay, what kind of lens the photographer uses, like uh, 250, 100, 360 millimeters lens. And yeah. So that's, that's it from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>